everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's been a little while, but as you may have known, if you follow me on Instagram, I had my baby on October 12th, 2018 at 3.31 in the morning. So this video is going to cover my very long and arduous birth story and yeah, kind of will explain a lot of why I've been so MIA and still going to be probably a little slow to return to normalcy. But anyway, um, let's just start at the beginning, right? Get yourself a snack, get a drink, get some coffee or tea. This might be a little long, um, but I hope it will help those of you who are about to have a baby soon or um, are just curious and want to know what happened. So let's just get to it. <laughs> okay, so on Tuesday, October, whatever the earlier week, Tuesday of the week that I gave birth, because October 12th was a Friday. So that Tuesday, I went to my OBGYN for my normal checkup, and I did something called a membrane sweep. Now, um, they told me that it was going, to, that I was allowed to do a membrane sweep for two big reasons. One, I was an IVF pregnancy, so they knew at that point I was over 39 weeks pregnant for sure because they know exactly when the embryo was implanted and also um, I was having a healthy pregnancy and I passed my group B strep test. So because of those reasons, they said, if you wanna have a membrane sweep because you're uncomfortable, we will do it for you. Which if you don't know, a membrane sweep is when they stick their finger in your lady area and they basically loosen the, um, I think it's the amniotic sac. I could be totally wrong, but they loosen the amniotic sac from like some kind of membrane. They basically loosen it up inside your cervix, which can induce contractions and therefore put you into labor. The week that I went in, that week I was having, I didn't know this, but I was having contractions. I was pretty uncomfortable. I was having really low pelvic pressure. And um, because of that, I just was like, I'm done. Like, and I was even shocked that I made it that far because I was convinced this baby was coming early. Um, so we did the membrane sweep. Thank God I brought my husband. That membrane sweep was excruciating. I would say if I had not gotten an epidural, the membrane sweep was more painful for me than contractions and labor itself. It was so bad. I was see like basically seizing on the table. I was shaking. Um, from how painful the membrane sweep was. My husband said he has never seen me in that much pain. It was really bad. And the doctor was actually, she stopped early. Like she didn't do it as much as she wanted because she felt so bad for me how bad I was in pain that she was like, I don't even know if it's gonna work because I didn't get to like separate the membrane as much as I wanted to. So she's like, if you're um, still pregnant next week when I had come in for my following appointment, she goes, well, we can do it again if you want. And I was like, absolutely not I would rather kill myself like she left the room and I wasn't crying but then I was bawling I was crying the rest of the day from the trauma and like pain of the membrane sweep so I said if I ever get pregnant again I don't think I would ever do that nor will I feel comfortable recommending it to a friend on the flip side as you'll find out in a second, I did go into labor, so I guess it worked, but the pain, I don't really know if it was worth it. I, I'm not sure. So Wednesday, I, I was having these weird cramps, and like, they weren't bad, and at this point, I had been bouncing on a bounce, like on a yoga ball, birth ball, whatever you wanna call those, for every, like all day long. Like whenever I was doing anything blogging related or whatever, I was sitting on this bouncy ball, all the time because the pressure on my pelvis was so intense um and i did go for a walk that afternoon on wednesday and i remember i was only able to handle like 15 maybe 20 minute walks at that point in the pregnancy and i remember when i was walking there were two points in the 15 minute walk that i had to stop walking because the pain was so bad so at the time i didn't realize but i should have probably been timing it i was having contractions and they were about seven minutes apart at this point on wednesday but mild later in the afternoon around four or five i feel like um they were pretty regular like it was kind of constant is what i kind of felt like um and my cousin who went through ivf and some friends of mine were like just call the ob like you don't really know what the hell's going on and i didn't so i called her and she immediately wanted me to wanted to send me to triage in the hospital because I had the membrane sweep the day before. So 
Um, my husband came home a little earlier because we had to go to the hospital. And at that point, you don't know if you're really in labor or not. Like they might tell you to stay. So we prepared our minds that we might stay, although I really didn't think I was in full blown labor. So we went to the hospital and then they started getting more, a little more intense, but the same frequency. Um, again, I still wasn't timing them, so I had no idea what was going on. So when I get there, I show up essentially looking like this. I think I had even recorded a YouTube video that day. It might have been the Maybelline foundation wear test. I think it was. So I had like full glam makeup on, you know, I was dressed, you know, as cute as you can be dressed at 39 weeks pregnant. There were these other women there like totally dying, like in full blown labor. And there I show up like totally glammed out, like looking pretty normal, even though I was in some pain. Um, and the nurses in the triage were kind of just laughing. They're like, there's no way you're in labor. So I got there around five. Uh, they did check my dilation. And at that point I was dilated four centimeters, I think maybe four and a half. At that point, after they took my vitals, we went back into the waiting room and my husband and I just said, well, let's just let's just time this stuff. Let's see if they are actually coming at a regular interval. So we started timing them and they were coming at around two to four minutes. Now they weren't, in, they weren't super bad, but they were definitely rising and falling with intensity around two to four minutes. So when I was finally taken back again, after they took my vitals, I was able to say, I think I'm having contractions every two to four minutes. So then they hooked me up to all like the stomach adapters and all the like contraptions that they check contractions with. And sure enough, I was 100% having contractions and I was in early labor. The contractions were coming every two to four minutes like I was timing. And um, they essentially said, yes, you're in early labor, but we don't want you to have to come and stay here because this could be days. Um, and we want you to come back when you're in so much pain you can't even speak. So I was like, okay, definitely not there yet. So they sent us home. We were we got home at about 8, 8.30 that night, Wednesday night. Um, and we just, we got some, I think we got Taco Bell or Chick-fil-A for dinner. We were watching TV and around 9 PM, I felt like I peed myself, <laughs> but not a gush and not even full blown pee. Like, I just feel like my underwear got wet, but it wasn't like what we thought. Like it really wasn't dramatic. It wasn't a lot. It was really just like enough to kind of wet my panties, but like not soak through them really. Like. So it was, at that point, that was 9 p.m. on Wednesday night. As far as I can tell anybody, that's when my water broke, but your guess is as good as mine. So we just went about our normal night, we went to bed. They kept intensifying, intensifying, intensifying. It was so bad, I was basically moaning and groaning all night. Like, so I don't know how much sleep my husband got. He says he dozed off here and there, but like not really because he could just hear me like moaning and like in pain um, and it was, it got to the point that around 5 a.m. it was so bad I was clawing the mattress. Like that's how badly my pain was from the contractions. And at that point, I could not talk anymore. So we called the OB again and she said go immediately to the hospital again. So we went and at that point I was, um, I don't even remember. I think I was, I wanna say I was seven centimeters dilated. If I'm wrong, I will, cause my husband remembers a lot more than me. I will insert it here at the bottom. Um, and the contractions were two to three minutes apart. They stayed the same frequency as they were earlier in the day. They were just much more intense. Like you can see on the graph, like when it um, was showing when the contractions were coming, they were way stronger. When I got to triage, I couldn't even walk in guys. I literally had to be taken into the hospital in a wheelchair. I couldn't eat anything. I could barely breathe. Like when they say, don't come back till you can't talk. That's how I went back. I was real messed up. Like, and it was bad because they left me in the waiting, like there were other women there too, um, but I was in the wheelchair waiting there. I couldn't, I was sweating, like it was bad. That was, it was so funny because when I went the night before fully glammed and came back the next morning, they were, the, some of the nurses were still there and they were like, now you're in labor. <laughs> like, this is how you're supposed to be. So, um, they immediately admitted me. I went, it went so much faster than the day before when I got there at like five and then didn't leave till almost nine. Um, I was basically, as soon as they checked me and they saw the contractions and how fast everything was within an hour, I was already in a labor and delivery room. So that was good. Um, so now here we are on Thursday, very early in the morning around, I think it was seven or 8 AM that I was finally in a labor, labor and delivery room. Um, and they immediately got me onto the epidural. Like I couldn't even talk. So it was, it was, um, 
unbearable. So put the epidural in within a half, 20 minutes, maybe half an hour. I was feeling back to normal. I mean, you can still feel a little bit of pressure, um, but I started talking about makeup again. Like the girls and the nurses, um, like the nurses that were helping me, they had obviously kind of asked like what my occupation was and things like that. So the vlog had come up. So we started talking about makeup and as labor and delivery nurses, they work long hours. So we started talking about long wear makeup and I was feeling totally great with the epidural. Now we're on Thursday morning and we're just waiting for me to dilate to 10 centimeters. So I was laying there for a little while and then they gave me this peanut ball, which if you've had a baby, you probably know, but it's essentially like a um, yoga ball, but it looks like a peanut and they stick it between your legs and it just keeps your leg and you lay on your side and it keeps your legs a little like spaced open. So the cervix has room to dilate faster. So I had that thing going for hours and around 4 p.m. I was nine and a half centimeters. So it worked really fast and I progressed really well, which was nice. Um, so around five, my OBGYN was like, let's, she was like, why don't we try pushing around five to try to get you to that 10 centimeters? Cause sometimes she was saying like, um, the way the baby's head was positioned, it was kind of, she felt like if I started pushing, I might push my cervix open to the full 10. Cause it was just, I wasn't really progressing at nine and a half. So um, I pushed for a little bit at five, like for a while, but no progress was being made. So they said, all right, we'll give you a little bit of Pitocin to see if that will help open you up a little more. Um, and we'll try that. So they put me back on the birth ball. I mean the peanut ball and started the little bit of Pitocin. Waited a little longer, a few more hours. That didn't seem to progress anything at all. So, um, but the problem was then the Pitocin was causing the contractions to be stronger. So I started feeling more pain and that's when my epidural failed. So I started feeling really intense pain on my lower left pelvis. So intense. And it was basically because of the way the baby was laying. So, um, the epidural kinked and it wasn't delivering the painkillers to that part of my lower body, like my left side. So we had to have the anesthesiologist come back and he tried to like increase the dosage of the, of the epidural, that didn't work. Fast forward, he had to redo the epidural. So redo epidural number one. Uh, we had to redo the epidural three times. So he fixes the epidural, that's great. Um, we tried pushing again, now we're pushing it like, it was 10 p.m. I believe now. And now my doctor was like, we're gonna do active pushing. Like you're gonna go, we'll let you go for three hours before we kind of call it and do a C-section. But, um, so we started pushing at 10 really actively where I was just pushing the entire hour. Like there was no breaks, like every contraction I would push. So um, if you haven't had a baby, the way that they do it is as your contractions start coming on, you, bear down or you hold, you know, whatever you're holding and your legs are raised. If you have an epidural, your legs are kind of numb. So your husband or your birth partner and the nurse or the doctor is holding your other leg up and you breathe in and you count to 10 and you push as hard as you can, like you're taking a poo um, in three breaths. Like you push, you breathe in, you push, you breathe in, you push, you breathe in. Um, so from 10 p.m. to 10, about 12, no, I'm sorry. Well, I started at 10 and I was supposed to push for three hours. We pushed for a little while. The epidural fails again. <laughs> now this time on the other side. So they had to redo the epidural again. That took another hour to like kind of get things fixed and like get the painkiller working again. So once that started working, then we started pushing again. So although they said three active hours of pushing, um, I started at 10 and about at 2.30 is when we finally stopped pushing. But like that was because the epidural failed. I had an hour between and you know, I took some breaks because I was tired. Um, mind you, I hadn't eaten anything since Wednesday night dinner, Wendy's or Chick-fil-A or Taco Bell, whatever we had, I don't even remember, um, because the contractions at that point had gotten so bad that night. And then once I got to the hospital Thursday morning, I was in such pain. I literally took a bite of a cliff bar and spit it out. I felt like I was going to vomit. So I was also exhausted at this point. Now we're at Thursday night, really late and going into Friday morning and I was dead tired. I had two failed epidurals at this point and I was just really weak. 
Um, at this point now, we knew that the baby's head was sunny side up, which means that her face was facing out. Babies should have their face facing your spine. It makes it much easier to push them out. Um, but her head was facing up and her head was fairly big, like not huge, but it was on the larger size. So as somebody who's having a first time baby, those two things were not working on my side, in addition to me being really weak and tired at this point. So I really didn't want to have a C-section. However, um, I was getting really tired and I just, it wasn't progressing. And I can tell like every time the doctor would go in to check me, she would see that the baby wasn't moving any further down. She was even like manually trying to stretch things out down there. Um, and it wasn't really working. So I could tell she was getting a little let down for me and like, my husband even was peeking down there even though I didn't want him to and he saw that like nothing was progressing and I was just getting more and more tired. So he finally just said to me like, hold on, my lashes look a little cray. Um, he was like, or I had asked the nurse, I said, at what point do we do a C-section? And she said, well, usually the rule is after three active hours of pushing, it's kind of up to the mom and like up to like if the baby's in stress or whatever. Um, my vitals were fine. Baby's vitals were fine. So at least we had that. Um, I also ended up throwing up. I was just so tired and I ended up throwing up. And finally Blake was like at around 2.30. I knew I was, at that point 2.45 was my three hour of active pushing breaking point. But at 2.30 my husband was like, how are you feeling? And I was like, I just can't do it anymore. Like I actually want a C-section at this point because nothing's working. Um, so. He, when the nurse came back in, he said, I think we're ready for the C-section. She's like, are you sure? And I said, yes. I, I mean, at this point, my labor broke on Wednesday night at 9 p.m. as far as I know. And now it's Friday morning at 2.30 in the morning and I had nothing left to give. And at that point I had thrown up, I had two epidurals. Like I wasn't dilating anymore. The baby was not moving. She was happy as ever where she was. So she wasn't in stress, but like, I just couldn't do it anymore. So, uh, it was quick after that. Like I said, it was 2.30 in the morning and by 2.45, the nurses and everything had me sign all the papers and by 3.30 in the morning, Savannah was born. Um, but at that point, now they started, had to get me ready for the C-section. So it was fast, like I said, but they, ru they rushed me into the operating room and since I had been on an epidural for so long, they couldn't give me a spinal block anymore. So they basically just had to give me a very strong dose of painkillers through the epidural or like numbing agents through the epidural, anesthesia, whatever you call it. Um, that wasn't working. They were giving me like medicine through the epidural to numb me up. And then they were pinching me like on my lower body to see if I could still feel it. And I was like, yeah, I can still feel it. And the, it was an anesthesiologist and an anesthesiologist resident. And they were like, you can still feel this. And I was like, yeah. So they kept upping me the meds and they were like, you feel this? And I was like, yeah. And they were like, you feel this? Yeah. Kept pinching me, kept pinching me. I felt it. I felt it. I felt it. Then they were like, all right, we're going to have to redo the epidural. Third time now we're redoing the freaking epidural. So at that point, I remember they had to sit me up on the operating table and I was like, I'm going to throw up. And like, there's literally like 15 people in the room. There is like two or three resident doctors, my OB, Savannah's nurse. I had my own nurse, um, Blake, two NICU doctors. And I'm like, I'm going to throw up at this point. And I'm like, you might, I literally remember saying, you probably think I'm the worst worst pregnant woman ever. And they were just like, no, like you tried really hard, but I felt like so embarrassed that I had to have a C-section, but I just couldn't do it anymore. But anyway, threw up all over the operating table because they couldn't get me a tray fast enough. Like I wasn't kidding when I said I had to throw up. So throw up now on the operating table second time. Um, and then they just laid me back down and oh, I'm sorry. No, we had to redo the epidural. So then they had to redo the epidural. Then they gave me such strong meds. My entire your body was tingling. I was like, okay, this is working. So they were like, all right. So they laid me back down and sure enough, within 20 minutes or so, they had the baby out. And that was that. It was very dramatic. I heard her screaming and crying. I heard Blake, like Blake got to go see her obviously like right away. And all I kept hearing was, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God from Blake. Um, and I was just laying there like on the operating table. Obviously I didn't get to see her right away. They were cleaning her off and I was just crying because like, I just couldn't believe it. I was just like, I, I still, that feeling of like not believing that you're at that point where the baby's finally born and 
after everything that me and Blake had been through to have her with IVF um, and all the trials and tribulations, like it was a very surreal, exhausting feeling. Um, and then I got to see her and I was just like, it was just, it was amazing. It was an amazing moment. Um, it was very, all I can say it was so surreal and Blake was so excited. I was so excited, but I was so, so tired. Um, cause now I, at this point I hadn't slept since really Tuesday night and it's Friday morning. So, uh, after that, they took us to the recovery room, but I was shaking so badly like this. Like I couldn't even talk, like I was shaking completely. Couldn't keep my hands still, my jaw was chattering so bad. And that's apparently from the epidural and the IV. Um, so while I was in recovery, they said by the time I left the recovery room, which was about an hour, I wouldn't be shaking anymore. So now we're in the recovery room. Nurses are telling Blake and I so much things. We're signing paper after paper. I don't know what the hell's going on. It's now 4.30 in the morning and I hadn't slept since Tuesday night. Like I was, didn't know what to tell you, like couldn't tell you what they were telling me about, but just information, 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 um, stuff about the baby, stuff about me. <laughs> I don't know what happened. So then after that, an hour was done. They moved us into the mom and baby room. It's 6 a.m. now. I remember like walking in at 6 a.m. There was another set of nurses then that start going over a whole bunch of information. I was literally, I just remember my eyes half closing, like I couldn't listen to anything they were saying and they just said to me, they're like, you're not going to remember any of this, but we're telling you anyway. And I was like, I have no, and then of course, then they need to get you breastfeeding right away because it's the first like hour after the baby's born or whatever, that golden hour. So I'm trying to nurse this baby while I'm literally half unconscious, starving, like ravenous, but they won't let me have anything but a liquid diet at this point for a few hours. So... I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. Baby football hold, I don't know. I have a C-section incision, that's in pain. Like everything's a mess. Um, I can't move because I'm still totally numb. So trying to breastfeed while you're literally unconscious and still super drugged up was really fun. Um, and then you can't sleep because the nurses are literally checking you or the baby's vitals every hour essentially or more so literally it was like i would doze off somebody would be coming in to check my vitals doze off somebody would coming in to check that savannah's vitals doze off my vitals again like it was freaking crazy it was so tiring and my hospital makes the babies uh sleep in or nurse in i don't know what it's called room in with you so they don't have a nursery for the babies unless you're a NICU um so she was with us the entire time so i was exhausted now as you might know with a c-section you're in the hospital for four days for recovery so i will say it was a blessing and a curse to be in the hospital that long it was a blessing in the way that we got so much support and so much helpful information from the nurses and the lactation consultants and the doctors um but it was a curse because i was just so uncomfortable in the hospital the bed was terrible um i just wanted to be home although I obviously had a major abdominal surgery, so I did need assistance and it was good to have the nurses and the lactation consultants there to give us advice with those early questions that happened. I get home after four days with the baby. Apparently I was looking fine, but I think it was like the second night home, you start getting night sweats really bad. Well, not everybody, I guess, but a lot of women after pregnancy, you'll get really intense night sweats it's your body's way of getting rid of the extra fluid and i'm not kidding when i say night sweats you sweat through everything like s s profusely so i remember waking up in the middle of the night sweating my a off and i woke like up because i was so scared like i thought something was wrong with me and i go to the bathroom i'm still wearing like the diaper undie kind of things and my incision is like oozing but i'm also bleeding still so it was like this pad thing that i'm wearing sorry if it's tmi but like the pad that I'm wearing has like blood and like stuff coming out of my incision at the same time. And the pad looked really scary. So I jumped in the shower to like clean myself off. And also cause I was sweating and this was my first inclination that something was wrong with my incision. So fast forward now, almost a week and a half later when I went for my incision check at the doctor and I contracted a hospital born infection at my incision site right in the middle of the incision it was not closing up and it was oozing which sounds so gross but it was um now this can happen with c-sections it's kind of common 
Um, also, I strongly feel that it was because I also had a laparoscopy surgery to remove polyps and they cut into me and in the exact same spot that they also cut for that C-section. So because that scar tissue is already there, I'm predisposed to that skin not healing properly and I think that definitely played a part in that part of the incision getting infected. So needless to say, um, the joy of that was that I'm allergic to penicillin. We had to try one antibiotic that wasn't working. They cultured the um, incision, realized that the antibiotic I was on wasn't even going to help. Then I had to start another round of antibiotics. And that was another two weeks of antibiotics on, in addition to the four full days I was on antibiotics in the hospital. Two plus weeks, three plus weeks on antibiotics um, while I'm still trying to breastfeed. Like, you know, it's a lot for your body to be handling. Got this hospital born incision infection. And the way to manage it is to have my husband do something called wet packing. Now what wet packing is, is well, I guess let me explain what this incision hole looks like. So the center of the incision was open and although they, I have dissolvable staples inside of me that will take about four months to dissolve entirely. Um, I also had steri strips um, on top of my skin, like holding it together. So all the rest of the incision healed fine, except for this one section in the middle that was probably about half an inch wide. But, um, but basically the whole inside down about an inch or so and about a nickel, a quarter, the doctor said it was a quarter size deep and about a nickel size wide. There was this hole, essentially just a hole all the way down to my fascia, which is basically through the layers of all my skin to the start of the muscle fibers. So um, that was open entirely. So what they had to do is now we have to internally heal that those um, tissues from the bottom up to the top of my skin. The only way to do that, well, one of the ways to do that is by wet packing. So what that means is the doctor or now my husband who's been doing it at home will flush the area out with a saline solution every day and then take dry gauze, like a very thin ribbon of dry gauze and shove it into the hole as much as you can to pack it like really tight so as everything heals, it's healing from the bottom up to the top of the skin. Um, and every day it gets a little more closed up, but as my doctor told me, that was gonna add on an additional three to five weeks to my six to eight week standard pregnancy and C-section healing. So this is why I have not really been active on the blogging stuff because I've been in pretty bad pain um, and it's very uncomfortable and it was just very traumatic and it's still traumatic like i'm still packing it every night my husband thinks that we have about two more weeks of packing before it's totally closed um but i go to the doctor every week she checks it and, and repacks it too to make sure everything's looking good but traumatic is an understatement let's just put it that way the baby blues and the postpartum depression and the guilt about breastfeeding or not breastfeeding or whatever that um decision is for you. I do want to talk about that. I might do it on the blog, but regardless, it is a very traumatic, emotional, hormonal time that hit me really hard. So um, in addition to obviously the physical craziness that I went through of having a very long and traumatic and painful labor and then having a very long and traumatic and painful recovery did not make anything easier for me. That's for sure. And then having very little help. So Anyway, um, we are six weeks postpartum as of this weekend, Thanksgiving weekend, and I do feel a lot better emotionally, although I'm still healing physically. And um, the baby is a pretty good baby. I mean, she definitely has her moments, but she has been pretty good, I have to say. So that is the story. If you have questions about anything that I went through or anything motherhood related, please let me know. I hope that explains a lot and helps those of you who might be having a baby soon too know that this stuff happens and you're gonna be okay but you just gotta take it one day at a time so i hope that's helpful and i will talk to you guys in the next one thanks so much i'll see you guys later